Hey Science fans, welcome to another of my videos and we're going to talk about a few of the things that the Senators did this past week. So the Senators are coming off their very first victory of the season, a 5-3 victory against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Always nice to see them beating Toronto. And uh, yeah, everybody looked good. Uh, Brady Kachuk, three points. So uh, yeah, he's, uh, you know, a lot of people think he might have a breakout year and uh, he very well might. He's off to a great start. Tim Stutzel looked good. He didn't get a point. Uh, but he certainly uh, looked pretty good in the lineup, didn't look out of place at all. And yeah, hopefully uh, things progress well for us. Uh, so a few of the minor things that happened. Uh, number one, the Senators lost Rudolph Balsers on waivers. And I'm a little disappointed because Balsers came here as part of the Eric Carlson trade. I think he was mostly considered a throw-in. Uh, but he's 23 years old. He's a point-a-game player in the AHL, so we know he has the talent. Uh, but the Senators just never really wanted to give him much of a chance. Uh, they just didn't see him as part of their future. Uh, so he's gone now. I guess he's just now a victim of the numbers game. And he was reclaimed by San Jose, which is the team that originally drafted him. Uh, so hopefully the Sharks give him a chance, and I'm sure that they will. And I think in the long run, Balser develops into a decent enough bottom six forward. A guy that maybe gets you 25 points a season. Uh, I would say he plays a lot like Nick Paul. Uh, he's a little bit smaller, though. But I think he'll still be a decent enough player. But hey, you know, good luck to him anyways. Um, next thing was a minor trade that involved Max Lejoie being traded to Carolina for Clark Bishop, a minor league forward I'd never heard of. Uh, so anyways, this is basically a minor league trade. Uh, Max Lejoie spent most of last season in the AHL. The previous season... Uh, was his rookie season with Ottawa, where he had 50, where sorry he played 56 games, he scored seven goals and had 15 points, and you know that was a pretty respectable outing for a rookie defenseman that most Sanders fans had never heard of. You know Lejoie came here as an unknown. He wasn't expected to make the team, but he played really well in training camp, and then he goes out and he scores a goal in his very first game, and it's worth noting that. Only one other Senator defenseman had ever scored a goal in their first game, and that was Wade Redden. So Lejoie ended up, I think, getting four points in his first six games, and he looked really good. But then he just kind of hit a wall, and it became apparent that he was a little bit out of his league. Uh, so the Senators sent him back to the AHL, and he just never really came back. Uh, but it's kind of interesting that this guy had seven goals in 56 games uh, as a rookie, I'm not sure if he's ever going to score seven goals in the rest of his NHL career, to be honest. I think he was a great guy, but I'm not sure if he's ever going to be an NHL regular. He's one of those guys that I think is going to spend most of his career in the minors, and he'll get the occasional call-up when the team hits a rash of injuries, uh, but I don't think he's ever going to be an NHL regular. And uh, I'm not too sure about Clark Bishop either. Um, again, more of a minor league forward. Might get a few games here and there, uh, but again, this was just a very minor trade. Uh, the other thing I wanted to address was, now there's all these rumors going around Pierre-Luc Dubois. And Columbus uh, wants to trade him, or Dubois is asking for a trade. I don't know why. My guess is he just doesn't want to play for Tortorella. Uh, but I'd like to talk about the Senators maybe getting in on the Dubois sweepstakes. You know, there are some talks that, you know, Dubois, you know, when big players go on the market... You know, and you're the local team saying, hey, you know, maybe we should make a play for that guy. Not only Dubo, but even a guy like Patrick Laine from Winnipeg. You know, there's been speculation uh, he's looking to get out of Winnipeg. And, of course, the rumors are that maybe Dubois gets swapped to Winnipeg for Laine. So you never know. But I think from the Senators' perspective, uh, what I'd like to ask anybody watching is, do you think the Senators should make a play for Dubois? You know, uh, I personally do because we need a number one center. And Dubois, if he steps into the lineup, he's automatically our number one center. And I could definitely see him having good chemistry with Brady Kachuk, good chemistry with Drake Batherson. Um, I see a line of Dubois, Kachuk, and let's say Dadanov. That's a pretty good line. I wouldn't say it's, it's really an elite line, but it's one of the best lines we've put together since, you know, Matthew Shane and Mark Stone. So, yeah, I definitely think the Senators should make a play for him. Uh, but what would we give up? Well, that's a tough one because Columbus is not going to trade him for nothing. They're, and also, 
we're going to be competing against a lot of like other teams. I mean, the Rangers are probably going to make a play. The Montreal Canadiens are probably going to see what they can get him for. So, what is your fantasy trade? I think, knowing most of these general managers, they always have this cliche that they want a player, a prospect, and a first-round pick. So I would say, well, you know, the player that we could probably give up, and it looks like we're, we're not really very high on him anymore, would be Colin White. He's young, he's 23, still could put things together, but he was actually a healthy scratch. I mean, that tells you something that Senators have really lost confidence in this guy. Uh, and he's got a, a pretty big contract as well. And for a guy who makes $4.5 million a year to be a healthy scratch, that's a pretty bad sign. So, yeah, maybe the Senators offered Colin White as the player. The prospect, well, the Senators have a lot of prospects. And I know they might be willing to give up guys like Logan Brown, but I don't think Columbus would really be interested in Logan Brown. I think the Columbus Blue Jacks would really want a guy like Jake Sanderson. I think if you're the Columbus Blue Jackets, that's the guy you want to look at. And honestly, Jake Sanderson, you know, who was the fifth overall pick from this past draft, he seems to me to be like a John Tortorella type player. And I think if the Senators offered Sanderson, that would definitely get their attention. And, of course, the Senators will probably have to give up a first-round pick. That's always dicey because we never know where this pick is going to end up. And, you know, you could draft a superstar. You could also draft a bust. So it's a gamble. And I know some people are saying, well, remember when we traded a first-round pick to get Matt Duchesne? Look how that worked out. Yeah, I mean, that didn't work out that well for us. But keep in mind that Dubois is four years younger than Duchesne and just has... If we bring in Dubois, it's more of a long-term player. It's not Duchesne who's gone in a year. Dubois could be here for perhaps another five or six, seven years, maybe even longer if we get him under contract and if he likes playing here. So yeah, I think if we offered Colin White, Jake Sanderson, and a first-round pick in the 2021 entry draft, I definitely think that would get Columbus's attention. The only problem is would that be a better package than another team is willing to give up? I don't know, because I don't know what the other teams are willing to give up. But I think it's at least worth talking about, you know? And, and I think it would be great to see Dubois in a Senator's uniform, because he's, he's such a good player. Uh, but anyways, we'll move on beyond that. Yeah, let's have a little talk about guys like Colin White, Galchenyuk, Eric Brandstrom. Uh, these guys were not playing. Uh, were they healthy scratches? I, I mean, I guess so. I haven't heard of them getting injured or anything. Bradstrom's played pretty well in Switzerland, so I don't know why the Senators wouldn't have him in the opening lineup. I was kind of surprised that they had um, Christian Wolanin over Bradstrom. Uh, so that's kind of, again, the Senators look like they're losing confidence in him. Galchenyuk? Kind of strange that they, the Senators would choose to play guys like Artem Anisimov and Cedric Paquette over Galchenyuk, because I would think Galchenyuk's a better player. But, you know, I mean, it's only the first game, and I guess... The Senators are maybe still feeling their way. You know, we didn't play any exhibition games. Let's remember that. So this is almost like, you know, training camp and the regular season at the same time. And I'm sure these guys are going to get in at some point. Uh, so we'll see how they do. But I definitely am a little bit concerned about what's going on with Colin White. Because, you know, if the Senators have lost confidence in him, and if he doesn't get his game together, I, I think that's it for him. And I would say the same thing about Logan Brown, you know, another prospect the Senators just sent him to the AHL and uh, they're definitely losing confidence in the guy so Brown is a guy uh, when they drafted him in 2016 thought he could be a first line center doesn't look like that's going to happen and it doesn't look like he might even have a future on this team so we'll have to see how that plays out but yeah that was uh, basically this week in Sens hockey and uh, yeah thanks for watching and also if you have any potential uh, trade uh, requests for, let's say, Dubois. You know, I already mentioned mine, Colin White, Jake Sanderson, and a first-round pick. Uh, but yeah, if you do you think we should bring in Dubois? And if so, what should we give up? All right, thanks for watching.